I don't need a man to fix my problems. I do. I really do. Help me, please. <laughs> so let's start this again. Hi, everybody. Welcome Hi. to our first YouTube channel. No, wrong. Ah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first I'm podcast channel. We did this part. Yeah. So welcome to our first podcast episode. Uh, do you guys want to hey. introduce yourselves again? I'm sorry. <laughs> So, Alia, okay. go again. Okay. I gotta count you in. Three, two, one, tell them. Okay, so, uh, hi guys, my name's Alia, and I've been playing Yugo for about five years now. Um, even though you're both based down in Galway, so Dungeons and Donuts is like our locals, basically. And yeah, uh, Lily plays, but then I'm also working in Dungeons and Donuts, so I'm kind of the one you call if you're like looking to like get into Yugo locals. Uh, or Digimon as well. Just <gasps> Digimon. Oh there. yeah, we literally, we literally just got some boxes in the house. Um, Wait, do you have product um, up in there at the moment? Actually, yeah. Oh, Digimon we product. Have, we have yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna hit you up on that later because I want to buy some boxes for Digimon. Dude, dude. Oh. I'll get you in touch with Ronan anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, apart from that, we've kind of gone to like a few regionals, a few YCSs abroad. And yeah, I mean, kind of between running and playing locals, that's we're kind of in it 24 7 all the time, nearly like. We're basically like mission control here because we're all playing you and, every day. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Lily. I have also been playing Yu Gi Oh for five years after not playing it since I was uh, seven. Um, I taught. But that's. That's still, I, I topped a YCS when I was seven, actually. Uh, I just don't tell anyone that because there's no proof. Uh, <laughs> the joys of being a, a 90s kid, right? <laughs> Not everything yeah. is on the internet. Yeah. All, all the records were destroyed by Upper Deck, so don't look into it. So, um, yeah, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for five years. Just recently, uh, myself, Adley, and a couple of friends started our own playtesting group that soon developed into a team named Galway Skull Mariners and we've been like playing together and practicing for quite a long time and as a team our whole goal was to like uh make the community in Galway a bit more uh not not competitive per se but just we wanted to make Friendly. it grow and then, yeah. yeah and we wanted I'm to watching. really we wanted to really like help other players and like yeah just make it a fun and and open locals and so since then our locals have been pretty busy and we had our first regional in Dungeons and Donuts in the new shop that they moved to last year, which was really good. Mm. Um, that that, so yeah, that but, regional, uh, actually, <laughs> that regional you had in Galway was my first and only regional that I've ever been to. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, that's where we first met. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's where you first met, is it? Huh? Is that, did you used to say that's oh, where we yeah. first met or where you first met? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, we met that. We first met that. That's where we first met. My my first ever experience of like a regional and I was so excited to get hyped up for like YCSs and shit. And then it, yeah. And then it all died. Yeah. It all died. Yeah. yeah. We we were we were attending YCSs like regularly enough. We really liked going to Utrecht. Yeah. Um, That was like our favorite place to go because uh, it's really fun there it has nothing to do with the country's laws on drug consumption at all yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, we really like the atmosphere of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS the competitive mm. nature and how you get to meet people and travel so we've been doing that for all this time and yeah we really love it yeah sure we had like trips to Poland planned but then COVID, so what are you gonna do? Yeah, I planned on hitting every major YCS this year, and it started with Milan, I think, in yeah. in this yeah. four YCS for Europe, and Milan sucks. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I literally, I was ready to go to all of the all of the YCSs as well. I had I had my pocket money put away and everything. And I was ready to go, and I was like, oh, but there's still time, guys. There's still time. It'll happen. It'll happen. They'll come yeah, back. <laughs> Did you enter the LCS on the weekend, actually? Yesterday? Whoa. Whoa. Say again. <laughs> did, <laughs> oh, did, did you enter the LCS that was on, like, yesterday and today? No, no. but some of our teammates yeah. did. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you, our friends, entered it? And, I mean, we we like playing, but I suppose it's just time. I mean, like, I'm running the Yu-Gi-Oh! Locals and Digimon, so that is, like, enough card games in my week already. Yeah. And I think just, like, the LCS is, like... 
I mean, well, I think it was like 200 people or something. Like, I, I don't have time to practice that much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's I'm, fair. I'm dealing with the locals mm -hmm. and their mass, you know what I mean? Like, that's my kind of side of it. Yeah, and like, I, I did a bit of remote deals like a few months ago, and I really don't like it. Uh, because you can just win by having your side deck binder next to you off camera, so I'm not a fan. Uh, Dango uh, Seca in, in every hand. <laughs> Dango Seca, every hand. But Wait, like, you don't you don't that. tape it to your PC screen and just take them off around as you go along? No, oh, hang on. What's on your field? I said... It... Like, <laughs> no, what you do is like, you gotta, so you gotta sellotape it to your computer screen and then you can just be like... Yeah, so, uh, effect failure. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, that's been it. Like, you know, we, we, we've been a little bit out of the competitive scene since COVID because playing online is a, is a, it can be a drag yeah. and nothing yeah. will replace, like, a regional mm -hmm. or a YCS or your own locals. Yeah. I think yeah. as well, like, Olivia are both just quite focused on building the Galway community. Yeah. That we don't really... You know, we like the more competitive events and going abroad. At the end of the day, it's like if Galway locals is shite, you know, you're not going to have much fun apart from, you know, the couple of events you go to in a year, like yeah. the bigger yeah. one. So having like a really solid base here, that was like our kind of goal coming into it. And like with me working in the shop, everyone that buys Udo product, I'm like, come on, come to the locals. Like, let's go, you know. Ali is so good at upselling our locals is now at 200 people. <laughs> what? Your so locals is at is that online or is that like in shop? <laughs> Wait, no, like no, we're, 200 no, we're people come kidding. to your locals? You know, you know, it says global on your ceiling as well. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I am known. I am known for being gullible. <laughs> Ali is just so good at, at what she does with Yu-Gi-Oh! Locals that like, we have a constant sign-up every week. And we have quite a lot of kids and quite a lot of parents who really like bringing their kids to our locals. Mm. Do any of the parents play? That's the next no, step. you got to get the parents to play. We, yeah, I think, I think no, um, there's one man that's like, she's a little bit creepy. And one day I feel she could get into it. And we love her. Yeah. So and we had another man that used to play magic. Oh, so yeah. we're like, if you play magic, yeah. you can come to the locals. It'd be fun. But I think the man's like dropping the kids off and then they can do their, their bits on the Saturday mm. as well. It's nice that way for them. Like Alia has a particular talent where she's able to actually make people who play Magic the Gathering convert to Yu-Gi-Oh! She's done it like twice successfully in the last month. Oh, it's a better game. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, yes! <laughs> I'm sure everyone here is going to agree with that as well, that Yu-Gi-Oh! is the better game. And now all the Magic people are going to hunt us all down. And that's going to be the end of us now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Magic players are too busy watching paint dry to actually watch something interesting. Oh, wow. I wonder what yeah, Digimon players are. <laughs> yeah, get fucked, Magic. <laughs> I wonder what Digimon players are going to be like. I'm excited for that one. There's going to be more competitive between. Don't take yourself out of existence, bro. Oh, my. <laughs> so. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. No, no. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. I got a few more. Yeah. Get him out of your system now. It's fine. Oh, we we hate. We hate game. magic. Oh, no. You lost me. I'm still here. Hi. Okay, you're back. Okay. I'm still oh, okay. here. I promise. Like I'm here. I promise. I'm here. I forgot. I'm here. Um, so, okay. yourself. What? Oh, I forgot. To, yeah. Oh, I forgot about me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kayla or Bobby, whatever you want to call me. That's fine. Uh, I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively for a little over a year now and I'm really fucking bad like it's bad it's really really bad like I kind of took a six month break because of COVID like but I'm getting back into it and I just keep choosing decks that are really bad like I tried to play Melfi's last day and that just didn't work for me at all but you know Melfi best deck way <laughs> and I have done I went to like the one and only regional that I've ever been to is the Galway one which was fabulous that was a lot of fun actually and I think I came, to, I, I came in the twenties or something because there was a good few people there. There was like fifty there or something, wasn't there? There, in, in and there at about. 
And yeah, yeah. I, I came like in the 20s because I, I managed to win a good few of those games there. I was actually quite impressed with myself. Um, I even made a child cry. That was fun. As you do. <laughs> I didn't hear about that. Like, oh. By child, do you twenty-five year old man? No, no. Um, probably about <laughs> eleven or twelve years old. Yeah, yeah. I I conducted him, and he cried. So that happened. <laughs> I was just like, oh no, I'm the worst person alive right now. We no take no prisoners. Okay, you set the precedent for your audience now. <laughs> So yeah. they know what it's fine i i do viewer drills on a wednesday and like there's these two kids who just keep kicking my ass on it so it's fine they, one of them's 12 wow. i think the other one's 16 and they're just fucking kicking my ass the whole time anyway <laughs> uh so that was the only region i went to that was like a phone but i started do, i did um a remote duel recently enough and i came top 16 with dragon maids so that was fun wow. Yeah. Well, it was like Dragoon made, so it was like a super expensive deck. So like, you know, we just you just fuck Dragoon on the board and hope for the best. And <laughs> then, <laughs> and I entered that win a PS five tournament as well. And there was like seventy four people who joined that, and I came twenty ninth. So that was, was fun. Something like wow. that. I think there was seventy four. Yeah, for win a PS five especially. Like, and I came. Yeah, and I came. I came. 29th out of that one and i was playing dragon maids again but the real kicker with that was because you guys know luke coogan yeah mm. yeah the coogs the coogs so like i was testing with him all week and i had to go up against him in round one so i was like oh fuck i couldn't even use the element of surprise because he built my deck for me so yeah. <laughs> there's that so he knew how to out it like straight away yeah. Where there's a regional we go to, all the Galway guys end up like being paired against each other. I'm sick of being paired round one against Alia, Alan, Alan, Alan Declan, Declan, everyone who yeah. we test with. It's so sad. Ginny, yeah, it's it's uh, it's the most unfortunate thing because I feel like I could have done a little bit better if I wasn't paired up against him round one because you you know he's just really good as well, which doesn't help. You should have smoke screened into something else. That would have shocked them. That would have been that would have been kind of funny, but like I, I I don't have many decks on my list of things to do, and dinosaurs is one of them, and they hard lose to virtual world. So well, they did hard lose to virtual world before the ban list, but yeah. well, though even even without the ban list, because like Shen Shen is a pain in the ass for dinosaur players, but yeah. like the Dragon Maid deck I went with was like it was specifically built to be decks like virtual worlds, and I still couldn't beat Luke Coogan's virtual world, motherfucker. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I forgive you, Coogan. It's fine. <laughs> I forgive you for beating me. It's grand. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much my experience. I started streaming, like, I think six months ago now. It's been it's been around six months. Ish. And I started off with League of Legends, and we don't play that on stream anymore. I am a ragey that's motherfucker. Bad. Like, you're playing League, and you're just like, oh, motherfucking stupid. Oh! So that happened. Not like that playing video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit less. <laughs> so yeah, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Because I was like, I was like, fuck it, we'll, we'll give you a gear a shot. Why not? Like, <laughs> Liam's just like, what the fuck was that? My raging. See, this is why we don't play League of Legends anymore. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was, I was streaming that for a while. And then I was like, oh, I might give Yu-Gi-Oh a shot again. I have to learn how to use Dueling Book at some stage because if we're going to be in this shite for another year, then I better play online or something. We'll see. I'm sure it's not that bad. It's that bad. Literally, like... What, have you played Duel Links? Duel Links. Duel Links. I've, I've played Duel Links. Um, I can't seem to get past the really boring parts at the start. I just keep like being like, oh... oh like especially when you already know how to play the game you're just like oh, this is boring and it's yeah. like speed duels it's just Yu-Gi-Oh again yeah and you have to it again so I started on I, yeah I started on dueling book anyway and like the first the first instance of dueling book was traumatic as fuck yeah yeah um, people, people calling judges on me and everything all the time and I'm like I'm just bad guys i'm sorry but now i'm getting better with the rulings and stuff so i'm gonna go into a more competitive scene now that we're 
we know to set, a, set, set your trap cards before we activate them. All trap cards do not just activate from the hand, it turns out. Who knew? I fucking didn't. <laughs> my, my first experience with Tooling Book was back when Dino was really, really good. Like when Denglong was able to go into Calamities mm. on its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did the full Denglong combo, changed Denglong's level, and then overlaid into Calamities. And the dude on the other side was like, you can't do that. And I was like, why? That's the effect of Denglong. He's like, Denglong's level five. And I was like, have you read Denglong? Like, have, I'm read back this? <laughs> have you read this? <laughs> but like, I'm sitting there like, are you kidding me? And then he just like called a judge. And I just sit and wait for like, oh, it was like 25 minutes or something. And then a judge came along and was like, that's how Denglong works. And your man just immediately quit. And I was sitting here like, my life is wasted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I had I had one of the judges come in for one of the matches. Um, so I actually knew the judge who came, who came in as well, <laughs> which was handy. I won't dox him uh, online. It was Liam again. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's always Liam. Like, Liam always Liam. <laughs> it is not. Liam entered the LCS and he lost his the first two rounds. Sorry, Liam. <laughs> he was testing so long. I felt really bad. I was like, oh, man, you, you'll get it next. You'll get him next time. And like Vlad played the LCS as well. And he got he got got in a good bit. But um, I think he just had some unfortunate matches as well. I don't know. Just playing online is just painful. You can't do the mind games that you do. IRL, yeah, yeah. you know, your opponent at all. Can be counting their summons for the crack. <laughs> yeah. How many summons was that? W one, two, three. Yeah. Don't even have an abiru. <laughs> just bad manners. Just bad manners. So yeah, that's been my experience with with Yu-Gi-Oh. I kind of like I switched over to to learning dueling book and stuff like that. And yeah, I haven't really turned back. I haven't played League in a while either because you know the whole heart rate thing. I've been playing Little Nightmares too as well. That's been fucking terrifying. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I literally drink an entire bottle of wine every time I play it because it's just like, fuck The only you. thing that numbs the pain. My yeah, heart. True. Like, I was like, oh, we'll do like, we'll do Variety Fridays and like hope for the best with some other like games and shit like that. And like last night I was, or the, like Friday night I was playing it and you've seen, you've seen Silent Hill, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know the yeah. nurse with the bandaged head on it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that, but it's a mannequin and it's chasing you, and you're just like, no. ah! oh, you know Whenever I play Resident Evil, Ali is like, "Is that a mannequin?" <laughs> and, like, oh, and then she's like, "That's okay." I'd rather a zombie than a mannequin. 100%. Oh my god, I would, I would rather zombies. I'd be fine with zombies, maybe. But the mannequins and the creatures in that, like, the game is beautiful. But holy fuck, I actually really shot myself like multiple times. So that was happening so okay we'll, we'll get back into Yu-Gi-Oh enough about Little Nightmares 2 it is a great yeah. game to go play it uh, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by them at all <laughs> I wish I was that would be great so I suppose why we're able to do a podcast on Yu-Gi-Oh we kind of like delved into it a little bit you guys have been playing for five years but like what was your like experience with Yu-Gi-Oh that you know you, you'd be like yes I can talk on this topic no problem Oh, what makes us qualified to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh on a podcast about girls in Yu-Gi-Oh? <gasps> You're on oh. the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am well, like female, I, I play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's I my credentials. That's it. That's fucking it. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, just like any of the lads, like, me and Ali have, you know, put hard work into it when we're going away abroad, like, to, yeah. to a YCS or something, you know, like, we're not just going... But our boyfriend, you know, for for the crack or whatever, Which like we always get asked. Ask. For, yeah, are for, you for here with only... your boyfriend? Are yeah. you here watching your yeah. boyfriend? Is he winning? And you're like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend, like my boyfriend, like you're my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm here with my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I mean. You no, know, like we, we put the work when it comes down to like if we actually want to be competitive with something. Yeah. But like you've the most experience in terms of tops, like you you've gotten day two at a YCS, which is pretty big deal. It's very uh difficult Ooh. to achieve, I guess. But um 
I don't put too much fuel behind it because I just enjoy playing. But for some reason, for uh, us and many other girls who play Yu-Gi-Oh, there are some people who don't enjoy us playing, and uh, it causes like issues for us. Like, <laughs> uh, like, like when Kaylee, you know. So like. Yeah, uh, uh, to talk about girls and Yu-Gi-Oh is to spread awareness that girls and people who aren't just dudes play Yu-Gi-Oh. And uh, that representation is important because Yu-Gi-Oh is a great game and deserves to be spread much further and much wider than just the dude's locker room. I what? Think. Yu-Gi-Oh isn't just a man's game? What? <gasps> I was told that recently. Literally, on stream, someone said Yu-Gi-Oh. Man game. <laughs> oh, that was uh, funny. That was funny. Bro. I may have gone to town on him as well. I was like, I was like, you, you are the fucking problem. You are the fucking. He's like, I'm gonna report you, and I'm like, fucking do it, bitch. Fucking report me. <laughs> you go man game. Yeah, no one's gonna believe you because I'm a woman. <laughs> because you is a man game, and women don't exist in Yu Gi Oh. So they're gonna be like, he's lying. There's no women in Yu Gi Oh. There, there's nothing better though sitting down to a table and uh, a lad is already just writing you off and you OTK him or something. Yeah, that's, that's honestly fun. the most satisfying yeah. thing. Ever. And that's like that's one of those unique interactions on being a girl who plays Yu-Gi-Oh because uh, you're there, there, there's a lot of um, what's the word like there's a lot of negative preconceptions and there's a lot of negative attitudes that grow in all male environments about about women and how they think about women so <coughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so 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 to be able to come in and not only challenge them in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, but you're challenging their preconceptions about what they think of women and how their attitudes form mm -hmm. in, a, in an all-male environment like Yu-Gi-Oh, that that gives the three of us and many other people who are going to be joining us on this podcast a unique look into how Yu-Gi-Oh as a game is changing and is becoming a lot more helpful. And you guys have made it really inclusive, especially up in Galway, where like you're saying that when you've both first started, it was like very male dominated, but now it is much different, right? Yeah, I mean, whenever we first came down, there wasn't a girl at locals, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, like me and I were like the first two down, really. Um, like we still are, to be fair, but like the community is definitely. Like, Growing in terms. Oh well, we have Lydia as well, actually. and we have Sarah. Like we oh, have, yeah, we, we have, have we have a lot yeah. of like we we have two new players, yeah. and that's great. And like we have other people who play who don't identify as male, which is great as well because like some people feel comfortable enough to uh you know uh, uh talk about who they are in, in reality rather than pretending to be someone else. And I think our locals is great that way. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, because we're, we're very open and inclusive to everyone. Mm. Uh, well, we try to be, and I think that's why our locals get as big as it is. Yeah, I think I think everyone at our locals is quite keen to teach people and not just uh, you know get an easy win. Per yeah, se, like maybe at a because you, know, yeah. be you know, like if you want your locals to be good, you have to kind of encourage mm -hmm. people to come in and like, mm -hmm. teach them the yeah. rules rather than just saying like well, I'm not going to teach you because when you end your locals, it'll be an easy match and be grand. Like yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, my, everyone is really saying new people. I am literally the only woman at my locals. <laughs> Unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm sure it'll change eventually. I'm still trying to get my friends to kind of come in on it, but they're I suppose my female friends aren't really as nerdy as I would be. So they're kind of if they're not nerdy then it's like they're not really going to come into it. I just need more friends. I just have no friends, guys. Yeah. Leave my friends. I think we're, we're <laughs> We're really lucky because we have each other and we've always had each other's uh, backs, like, yeah. metaphorically. Um, I, yeah. I, guess so, like, <laughs> I wouldn't catch you if you fell. I'm just saying, right. like, right now. Yeah, I guess for us, because like, we obviously have, like, a lot of friends who are women and say, in terms of, like, our two friends, like Sarah and Lydia. Um, Love you, by the way. Yeah, shout out. Uh, you know, it's it's quite hard. Like I have like other friends. I'm like, oh, like you played Magic, or maybe like you're into board games. Like, oh, you should give you a go. But because of like the reception 
of ego that it's like this toxic environment and oh like it's it's worse than magic it's it's worse than pokemon like you're just gonna be like harassed in it women yeah. just don't come and you have to be like no like it's not local <laughs> that's really nice yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But some people are just like, oh, I've, I've heard, I've seen it online, and like that's what it's going to be like when I walk into the room. So yeah, it's hard that way when it seems like that on the outside until you get into yeah. particular. Yeah, and like the barrier for entry to Yu-Gi-Oh is already so steep. Everything that you have to learn, the common interactions between staples that you have to know, gameplay yeah. mechanics, how a tournament works. This that there's so much to get into Yu-Gi-Oh, and to have the barrier of I I worry about uh, the fact that it's a male domin- dominated environment. Mm. That extra barrier shouldn't be there, but it is there for people. So like Yu-Gi-Oh is already hard enough to enter that way. Yeah, you know, and like I suppose all all of us are kind of lucky in the fact that apart from the few minor inconveniences online, um, I've actually had really really good experience with all of it like everybody's been like i said apart from the few online but they're just keyboard warriors you know whatever about them but like, everybody that i've met face to face has been amazing like they've been so good and like the, yeah it's 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 been great like even even in my locals even though i am the only girl like they've all accepted me like straight away they didn't make much of a deal of it which was really nice because i was like oh fuck like the first few times i went there i literally just watched Instead of playing, I was just kind of watching like, oh, because like you said, Yu-Gi-Oh has the steepest learning curve. Like it's it's so hard to learn from scratch. And then if you haven't played Goat, like I played a little bit of Goat, so I kind of had a bit of an idea, but I played it when I was like seven or eight. So I'm like, I ain't yeah. remembering shit that far away. I barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. Like <laughs> I'm not going to remember what Pot of Green does, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so like... Yeah, but when I went in there, like every time I, I go, well, one of the things I miss the most about my locals, though, is I'd go in with my cup of tea and my chocolate bar and they'd all be like, yep, yeah, she's just the one in the corner that fucking eats and drinks during Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. And I'm like, yes, tea, chocolate. It's that fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, so like I, I'm known as the weirdo instead of the girl, which is kind of nice. <laughs> and like, yeah. oh, you'd rather have that than the girl, for sure. Yeah. Any other like. I definitely prefer weirdo to be in like ah uh, it's your one. Yeah. So so I like like I said I've been quite lucky that way and and the regionals that I went to the Galway one and I did pop, hop along to a, another regional with with some of the lads just to kind of get a feel for what a regional was actually like in the first place before I entered myself. And that was really nice and I, I even went up to the table while a game was still going on and I was watching and they kind of let me just, you know, walk around and do that shit and then some I was like, "Oh, your field center is really cool." And your man was like, oh, do you want it? <laughs> I was like, yes, that is mine. Thank you very yeah. much. It was, yeah. a, it was a dark magician girl with her, with her titties out and it said censored on it. And I was like, I need that in my life. <laughs> Amazing. I was also yeah, like, why are you playing starts, that? Free stuff. <laughs> you always start free stuff and the good trades. And then it's like, can I add you on Facebook? And then later they're in their DMs. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have a lot of friend requests that I have not accepted. Yep. But oh, that's okay. I'll take your free shit. Like, I have no issue taking your free shit. Yeah. Give me your cards, boys. I that I got it, like, in gamers, like, which is great. Like, I'm, just, to, just to tamper expectations real quick, we don't want your free shit, okay? But you keep giving it to us. I'll, t- I'll take the free shit it's fine <laughs> was, oh. anyways, anyways. no but the, the, to be fair the field center i got off the man he's actually engaged and has kids and he was just really nice it, he wasn't giving it oh. to me he wasn't giving me the he wasn't giving me the free shit just because i was a huaman he was he was giving me the free shit because i was like oh i really like that and he was like she's just like my kids here have the free thing and i'm like oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much pretty much i'd say that was like it because like yeah I am a fucking weirdo, guys. Don't worry about yeah, it. <laughs> you want a spark in your eye. Yeah, and he was like, yes, you can have the softcore porn. Here you go, child. And I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> And I, uh, yeah, I just, I don't really use that field center online because, especially for remotos, because I will get in major trouble, but I will bring it to an event every now and then and like, or bring it to locals. And if there's two adults at the table, 
then I will use the field center. <laughs> but, you know, when you walk into your locals and you see a titty mat, you're like, dude, come on. Come on. Uh, <laughs> we, have a, we have a strict rule and the owner of Dungeons and Donuts enforces this rule that if there is any inappropriate mats with women on them in our locals, I'm allowed to beat them. So. Ooh, oh, they should bring that into locals just so I can beat people up. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't had to do it yet, but I've seen some people quiver and put their stuff back in their bag when they see me. So, well, like, yeah, no, because there is kids coming to locals. You don't want, you don't want to be like looking at it. Like, I honestly, I have um an Ari from League of Legends mat on my computer, and she does have the titties out, but like nobody can see that, and I would never bring that to my locals. What I bring to my locals is the foot ash mat. Like, you can look yeah. at those feet all you want. That's all you're looking at, boys. <laughs> Are you a what the hell? Am I what? <laughs> <laughs> Am I what? I like, remember what the hell with the feet ash. Oh, I love I love feet ash because it upsets so many people. It upsets so yeah. many people. It's so much fun. I have the mat. I have the binder. I have the sleeves. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I make sure the ashes that oh, I use yeah. are the feet ashes. Like, you know, they have to be the feet ashes in Dueling Book and IRL. Like, I was like to the uh, lads, I was like, you can take the forehead one. I'll take the feet. Okay, guys, it's fine. <laughs> I don't even I like feet. feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. No, I, I only <laughs> play it because it tells you. But that, that's that's the thing. I don't I don't even care about feet. Like, I couldn't give less of a shit about feet. It's just because it upsets so many people that I'm like, <laughs> feet. <laughs> yeah, inappropriate, like no, it's funny. It's funny. Adia plays three different rarities of Ash. That tilts me. Oh, oh I mix rarities. That really annoys people. Literally, yeah. someone yeah, in chat I... just said, "If you want to upset people a lot more, you can use mismatching rarities." I do that too. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my. Thing. I'm out to watch yeah. the world burn, lads. That's all. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's what all of us are here for. We're just here to watch the world burn. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, yeah. And like we covered why we're kind of doing this. We want more women in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because, like, y'all thirsty. You need to stop. Um. <laughs> y'all need to meet some some people. Y'all need to meet some other people. We're helping. <laughs> if we get more women in Yu-Gi-Oh! Then you, people have more of a common interest. And people will be less creepy, maybe. You know? It's funny. Yeah. Like, I get I get it. I get it. It's it's difficult sometimes to meet someone with similar interests to yourself. But also, yu gi not always about that. Anyway. <laughs> but no, but it, it would be nice to get a lot... It would be lovely to get a lot more women, children, everyone into Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, fucking Titanic style the women and children first ladies and gentlemen and then have that guy shoot himself in the head that's such a good idea oh my god no. <laughs> <laughs> but like change is good you know and i think i think it definitely is a good uh change for us to make and i think out of out of everyone i'd say we are definitely qualified to help that change because i know when a lot of a lot of girls are talking about their experiences in Yu-Gi-Oh. There is not a positive word to be said. I can promise you. And you know, and that can be really like disheartening for people who want to kind of join and stuff like that. So I was like, we yeah. genuinely like we've had the shitty experiences, but we're well equipped to deal with the shitty experiences. However, we've had amazing experiences and we want to share that as well yeah. as just as much, you know? Definitely. Got anything yeah, to add to that? <laughs> that's that's what makes us uh, good at the job. And uh, you can't take that away from us. So that's yeah. that's all I have for today. So, <laughs> this has been my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for going to our TED talk. Yeah. Oh, but so yeah, good and bad experiences. That's very true. I guess I, I think it really depends on who your entry is. Like I guess like if you have a friend that's trying to get you in, mm. that's like, really nice because you're like, oh, well, I'm going along with my friend, and if mm. anything happens, mm. I'm going to fall back on and la la la. But like I know myself like my entry was kind of like Lily got into the game first because uh, she was in Galway before I came down and she kept on being like oh come on like that like you should come down to the locals and I was like terrified yeah I was so scared and it took forever for me to go down but and it was just like constant like games in the houses and it was like preparing and like oh god am I ready for my first locals and like to meet all the lads you're like you know poking I mean? your head out of your home yeah, like I, I was, I was like, 
<laughs> girlfriend that was just like accompanying you to local club, you're like, okay, bye, sweetie, see you in five hours. Like, I'm gonna drop them now. <laughs> you were like, you were like the mother dropping off their kids to locals that you now take care of. <laughs> I'm the kids. <laughs> but, uh, I like when, once you meet like a few solid lads, it's it's one of those things of when you have like your good friend group and you go and that you're going to trips with, going to regionals with. It doesn't matter who else is there because at the end of the day, you're just going to talk to your lad, like all the lads about the rounds, and then you're going out for lunch after and whatever. Mm. So you're not really dealing with everyone else. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think that's what makes Yu-Gi-Oh a great game socially because. Even if you don't have a particular set of social skills, you are able to talk to someone about the game. And through that, yeah. you're able to realize and build relationships with someone, be it through a deck that they like, that you also like, or like how your round went. If you both had a bad round, you could talk to each other. Like, and this is the thing you're developing conversation around the game uh, because you already have an interest in the game. So already your social skills start to extend. But the thing is that that only goes so far because a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players only talk to other Yu-Gi-Oh players who are guys. And the thing is, is that the same standard is there. If you want to talk to a girl who plays Yu-Gi-Oh, do it the same way. You talk yeah. about Yu-Gi-Oh. There's yeah. nothing different there. Yeah. And that's why having having uh, uh, girls at your locals is great because not only are you comfortable talking to uh, other people, you're comfortable with talking to different types of other people i don't know how that makes sense that, no 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 no. i get, I get, what, you, I get what you're saying it definitely made like you have that commonality of we're going to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh first and then you might figure out oh we actually have different interests like um in, yeah. in my locals there's one guy he um is mad into rupaul's drag race and by god i fucking love that show <laughs> love it yeah. uh, so much so that like when i was living in korea we like it's kind of like taboo to be to be gay over in Korea. Like there are gays, so there's underground gay clubs in there, and every I think it was like every week or every second week they'd have um, a RuPaul's Drag Race showing in one of the underground nightclubs. So I'd go to that, yeah. and then there'd be like a drag show afterwards, and I was like, I am living for this. This is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, so I was talking to him about that a lot, and like we so, so you find out that you've got other commonalities and like. You have different interests, and then you can make friends, guys. Mm. Yeah, friends. totally. <laughs> like to, to the point where, like, your friendships with with, with people who you meet through Yu Gi Oh get so close. Like, like there are three of us who play Yu Gi Oh in this house, and we all live together. Like, so that's that's like a thing where, like, your friendship can go that far where you used to live together. Yeah, and that's crazy. Yep. But for a lot of lads who play Yu Gi Oh, they won't even let themselves get past the fact that someone's a girl to yeah get yeah, yeah. I, and, it, and it's unfortunate that's why i think if if there if it was more common to have like women and uh, and anybody else who identifies as something else in, in Yu-Gi-Oh as well like that's that's fantastic because then it becomes more normalized and then it's not as awkward and then we don't have to have these conversations because it's just not a thing Hopefully, anyway. Exactly. Our po- we plan to kill this podcast. <laughs> the, go- the goal of this podcast is to eventually kill it, right? It's like yeah. that. New- it's like that new dating app that's out. It's like, uh, oh, what's the, what's the line? It's like, um, we were made to be deleted. We were made yeah. to be uninstalled, and then they're like killing the app. Everywhere. It's pretty funny. I enjoy that. Ad. I like ads. I'm oh. weird. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know where it gets harpooned, uh, or the one where it's on fire. <laughs> I. I- also spe- spe- speaking about like Yu-Gi-Oh players and like forming like deep connections like there's four of us in my house and all of us play Yu-Gi-Oh and yeah. so Vlad just moved in but the guy who just moved out also played Yu-Gi-Oh and the guy that was living here before him also played Yu-Gi-Oh and then the guy before him also played Yu-Gi-Oh so we've just had a string of Yu-Gi-Oh players living with us so it's been interesting and you could say you were a house of champs we are a house. We are a house of champs. What was it? Oh no, we called ourselves the House of Chimps. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Monkey. Fucking house. And I did. Yeah, I did barrel roll across the kitchen today uh, in Vlad's stream, and he was just like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like, "I was trying to be inconspicuous. I'm sorry." <laughs> Didn't work out very well. And then Liam tried to barrel roll, and he hurt his hip as well. So yeah, we're just old now. Oh, so you know, whatever. You know, what are you gonna do? It's fine. <laughs> So I suppose we gotta get we gotta get the tough question out of the way now. You know, what's your favorite deck? 
You go first. <laughs> Alia's, Alia's favorite deck is currently very controversial. And Ooh. Nadir Mizzou. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Do you want to say it? You do want to say it. So What's your full time job? My full time job is normal summoning Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, yeah, basically, my favorite deck since I started is anything invoked. I did Blue Eyes invoked, I did Wind Witch invoked, Shadal invoked, and now we're on. Oh, Mechdai invoked. Yep. And Dogmatica invoked currently. Yeah. And uh, I haven't stopped for five years, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon until the yeah. band list takes Alex away. <laughs> <laughs> Which it won't. Which it, it won't. won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Lily, go on. Oh, right. I thought you were just like, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I haven't really experienced much invoked honestly I mean like I like I said I've only been playing like a year now and I took a six month break so I haven't experienced too much so I'm not too bothered by the normal summoning Al Alistair full-time job situation a lot of people seem to be though <laughs> yeah yeah uh my my favorite deck is kind of hard to pin down because I have loads of them uh I do you, you, you change a lot I'm very yeah I, I get one good thing and when invoked first with everything i was like oh i can update this but still have this thing that i know in it yeah like i start decks all the time i have binders full of decks i have deck boxes full of decks so i try different stuff all the time my favorite card in the game is red eyes black dragon uh, that deck is terrible though don't play it good cards um, good cards but i i i love it you know i i love that card but I love dragons in general. They're the reason I've played Yu Gi Oh! Because I'm blue as my dragon, red as my dragon, like dragons are class. And then, like, not too long ago, they released this deck where it was like, okay, picture this, okay, it's okay. dragons. Okay. Just their maids <laughs> as well. And I was like, bruh. So, bruh. so my favorite deck, which is currently the deck I play all the time, is dragon maids. So, dragon maids is really fun. That's my favorite deck. <laughs> Where's my binder? My binder is downstairs. Oh no! Okay, okay, okay. I, I don't even need. I don't even need a binder. Look, 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 look. You can, oh, wrong fucking camera. Da 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 da. da. Dragon maid nurse. Beautiful. Yeah. So good. Literally, my favorite deck in the entire game is dragon maids. Like that is what got me back into it. That is what got me into Yu-Gi-Oh. I was up at a regional in Dublin, uh, just watching watching all the lads, and someone threw down an Ernest on the table, and they were like, "Ugh, this fucking shit!" And I was like, "What is this furry shite? Let me take a look at this now." And they were like, "Do you not know about dragon maids?" And I was like, "Sorry, what?" And then someone showed me a picture of dragon maids. And I was like. This is yo yo. Oh, this no. is Miss Kobayashi's yeah, dragon maids. What the fuck? What? And then they're like, yeah, yeah look at all of these. And I was like, oh. yeah. And then there's been no turning back. And I have spent a lot of money because I didn't want to buy the deck. I wanted to pull the deck. So I bought fuck. I'd say I bought at least ten to twelve boxes of Mystic Fighters. You did that to yourself. Oh, I did that to myself. I, I'm like yeah. trying to do a bunch of booster boxes. I'm yeah, singles never all again. the way now. Singles all the way now. <laughs> but it's yeah. funny. At, at, our, at our locals before COVID, I turned to everyone and I was like, if I find out one of you pulled a Dragon Maid card and didn't give it to me in a fair trade, I'm going to break your legs. I was so like, I was like, you give me kitchen or I, I will be in your kitchen and I will beat you up. I was like, nah. But like, cause I don't know. I just really like them. I think I think they're cool. Sadly, Michaela, you and I are a stereotype now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to change conceptions, and we've just ruined it for ourselves. Oh uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, like, I am going into more competitive Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment. I did play Melfi's last week, so I'm really not helping my case here. That's honestly, so I'm really, really not helping myself very much. But I am investing in a Tri-Brigade core, and I'm going to give Tri-Brigade Luralisk a, a shot. Yeah. I do have, like, Virtual World and Drytron cores here, but Drytron's, like, just dead in the water now, anyway. But I am also a dinos dinosaur player. I fucking love the dinosaur deck it's so much my fun deck. I, that's I mine made too them. lily we're just the same person <laughs> I think my hair used to be red too bitch don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> in our locals anyway we're always like try dinos 
they're mm. they're good. Simple enough to very like. Dinos are a great introduction to the yes. game for anybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dinos I, and Shadows, I think. Should, yeah, sh- Shadows and Dinos are definitely probably the easiest first deck for anybody to play. Problem is, dinosaurs are always going to be expensive ish. Like, they're on the 150 range, I guess, which can be very. Yeah. Unless you're like definitely gonna play, it can be very daunting to pay that much. But um, Shadows is quite cheap, so that's a nice like cheap starter deck. And then if we want to get more competitive, Dinos. So I think yeah, Dinos is my only competitive deck right now. But so I'm I'm learning to branch out. We're learning. Yeah, competitively, I guess like you're you're playing in vote. Like you'll never play anything else. So you know what you don't mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bitch, get your Alistair away. <laughs> You can you can you can move into the house of chimps, don't worry about it. Monkey! No miss I'm an Alistair. <laughs> It's like, here's how, like, a lot of our conversations go, and it's always, like, the same four or five sentences of normal summon Alistair effect, and then I say, Ash, <laughs> and then Alia says, okay, uh, and, then, and then she goes, activate invocation, and I'm like, what's the fucking point? I like, guess oh. you're good at most player. If you're good at most player, you always have invocation in your hand. Yeah. No yeah. Just like if you're a good, if you're a, if you're a good dinosaur player, you always have a misc in your hand. Have you read this? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But you go play. Don't read. I don't read cards. I don't read cards. Yeah. Like, I. I recent obviously the ban list came out recently and I, and everyone was saying before the ban list they're like oh yeah misc is gonna be on it i was like misc is fucking chaining itself to the ban list motherfuckers have you read misc <laughs> god like this is already with the grave it can't be on the ban list. i know i know right <laughs> actually what did you guys think of the ban list stop i mean we upset by it oh no <laughs> affect me i was fine oh because they never touched your deck they never touched your deck i invested in a deck i knew that was never going to get touched for a reason you i don't pick that deck because you're like oh wow i don't have enough so money i don't have enough money to be spending on a new competitive deck every six months <laughs> every format yeah i really don't like having to change a competitive deck every format so i do like picking i do like picking like something that's i know a bit rogue out, right? Yeah, like I really like playing Infernoids. Uh, mm. Like if if Dragon Maids wasn't a deck, Infernoids would have would have been my favorite deck. I do love mm. them very much. So I like picking something that I can uh, adapt to a format. Mm. And like I like playing Rogue because like sometimes you blow someone out and they get so salty. Mm. And I don't I don't I don't mean bad. I just want to have fun and like that's how I go. I'm like yo, I'm I'm gonna tribute two of your monsters with lava gold. I it. guess as well, like playing Rogue, it's. It probably won't get hit in the list either, which is nice. But yeah, I, mean, I guess the one thing to say about the list is, thank fuck the FD is gone. Yeah. Because that was. Yeah. Oh. Wrong. Yeah, it's not around as much, I, I, but it needed. I, 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 yeah. Um. It was a functional list that did a lot of things. It prematurely murdered Tritron. Yeah. And for some reason, yeah. big Goldie Boots boy. And his Eldritch cards can just stroll around. His boots, and... his boots <laughs> protected him. I'm telling you, like his boots literally protected him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. bitch, you can't touch these heels. You ain't touching my fucking heels. I'm gonna be mad again. <laughs> I think the real loser though is ABC. No union carrier. They have lost so much. <laughs> you stop giving out about how ABC is a bad deck. It's been a bad deck for 25 years. Oh my god. The ABC players, they don't deserve the list that they get. You know? It's like every list are like, and now how can we hurt the union players? <laughs> unionize! Uh, so, ah, they should unionize. Uh. I'm sorry, I'm here all week, guys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I thought, like, VFD was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. It's been coming for a while. VFD has been too... He's been working too hard for too long. That boy. Uh, I was surprised about the Drytron. Well, like, we knew Ben 10 was going to be hit, but they really, they really hit Drytrons harder than they needed to, I think, because that's definitely not going to be meta anymore at all. I'd say this thing's going to be coming out of the woodwork, like, 
Tri Brigade Lyrilisk yeah. seems to be another deck that has the possibility to be meta. And Dragon mm-hmm. Link. Hello, guys. What? Like, everyone's given out that Invoked hasn't been hit, but like Dragon Link hasn't been touched in like a year. Yeah. Literally a year. It's been a year. And I'm like, wow. Konami also loves dragons. Yeah, yeah. they do. And like, I've played Dragon Link competitively. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it as much as like playing uh, uh, Dragon Maids. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a, uh, it's it's a little bit like you're doing the same thing every turn, whereas with yeah. Dragon Maids, you're doing the same thing every turn. But like. That's why it's a good deck because it's like reliably doing the same thing every time. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like, uh, yeah. I'm really surprised LP hasn't been hit. It's not. I, I was okay with LP not being hit because obviously I play LP in my Dragon Maid control version. <laughs> it just it extends the deck good. a little bit more. Like I don't I don't give a shit about like LP not being hit, but like they could have hit something else in <laughs> they could have hit something else in Dragon Link. But I think. This format, definitely Dragon Link is going to be one of the main decks that's going to be played. And also, though, my girl Chamber is being played in Dragon Link. Like, I'm proud of her. She's getting meta. She deserves this. Like, I bought yeah. like, I bought her at 7 euros. She's now 70. Crazy. 70. I was like... <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll no, I want to think- Starlights, though. Uh, oh, there's so many yeah. spawns. Yeah, stop. That's the thing. People people see like Dragon Maze as like, oh, that crappy deck that only wusses and girls like playing. And it's like, oh, if you play Dragon Maze, you're gay. I've seen that so many times. And I'm like, I hate that because like, wow, if it wasn't for Chamber Dragon Maid, Dragon Link would have such a harder time. And if it wasn't for Dragon Maid Hospitality, and right now, if it wasn't for Dragon Maid Tidying, like Tidying. Dragon Link would, would not be where it is. Well, it's so, the same. It was the same thing when uh, you saw like Luna like top do you know and it was kind of like oh my god like what do you do in the lunar lights and it's like because they're good <laughs> shout out to Vlad for like talking about lunar lights that time and he put lunar lights on the map that was funny oh yeah. that's cute i haven't <laughs> seen lunar lights i must check them out oh. lunar lights oh i can't they're, look they're at them without feeling sad anymore yeah. are they they're gone like fluffles. another cute deck and it's, it's like Fluffles are they're they're rogue like but they're fun. Yeah, like, I shouldn't yeah. I, should, I shouldn't feel bad playing this cute. Deck, Fluffles you know? yeah. are so much fun. Oh my god, I they they look like they're so much fun and and like, uh, what's the new one again? It's uh, Melfi's are pretty much like softer fluffles, and it's yeah. like they looks like so much fun to play. But why are they so bad? They're so bad. Yeah, they're so crazy combos. Like, but the yeah, like fluffles are basically. Um, either you OTK in one turn and they have like absolutely no hand traps or you die <laughs> or you die <laughs> <laughs> or you have all like, your hand traps and are somehow able to stop them but then you don't have a board <laughs> so it's like it's very glass candy unfortunately yeah mm, uh, it makes sense Luna Light Tiger is banned and it killed the deck ah that's what happened all right it's in my banners here that's a cool banners binder uh, oh that's that's a really good idea to have because then banless binder might actually invest in one of them i did chop up my um my vfd for a meme so you know there's that <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually had calamities in my banless binder since the last list because i thought it was gonna go on the last <laughs> list so i put it in preemptively uh, you saw the future you were just too far in the future yeah and do you remember that time adam was like why is uni carrying your banners by now i'm like because i know oh, oh i have to text him about that because i forgot oh but yo it's... get your banners predictions in with lily next list guys <laughs> <laughs> so i think this was a very good first episode i suppose we'll, we'll put the to put the reins on it there and keep want you yeah what are words like what the fuck i'm just <laughs> make you want to come back for episode two (laughs) so we're gonna be doing these um podcasts uh once a month to start off with just because you know people have lives we have lives unfortunately it's sad but it's true you think you get (laughs) play my life is normal (laughs) we're not listening she has a she has a full-time job there she has to normal summon alistair every at least at least nine to five every day or it doesn't work and he gets put on the ban list like it's the ritual it's the it's the invoked ritual talk to far about it <laughs> but like 
yeah so everybody if you enjoyed this podcast make sure to like and subscribe and then yeah thanks guys for coming on this is this is the oh, elemental right e-girl up. crew so we're gonna be back every single month with a new episode till the end of time or mm-hmm. until you know equality or something I don't know. <laughs> until you go into you. <laughs> did you just say girls girls <laughs> 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 Until Yugi has more girl. Yep. Yeah. Y- Yugi <laughs> needs more girl. More, yeah. more. No, Yugi needs more grills. We're going to make some steak. It'll be great. Okay, so. yeah. <laughs> Return to monkey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, thanks for watching us. And like I said, we'll be back again next month. So, take it easy.